Hey everybody, John Peterson from John Peterson Photography, and today I want to show you a couple of techniques for selecting objects in your image that you need to apply edits to. Now, both Lightroom and Photoshop have tools available to do sort of object selection. As you guys know, the latest updates to Lightroom were fantastic for the masks that you can create. And along with those masks came some object selection tools beyond just the brush. I remember in the old days with Lightroom, you just had to use your brush and paint, and it was a pain in the butt. But now Lightroom is so improved, you can do some fantastic masking in Lightroom. And in Photoshop, again, there, are, there have been for many years multiple different selection tools that you can use. And I want to show you one specific one today uh, for selecting different objects that you want to apply edits to. So let's go ahead and jump into the images and uh, take a look, see what, uh, see how both of these pieces of software perform. All right, well, I'm gonna use this image as an example for object selection. Now, you know, with Lightroom, with the latest additions to Lightroom, there's, there's some great masking techniques um, to allow you to select the sky, the subject, the background, um, you know, linear gradients, radial gradients, all that kind of stuff is great. Um, but for an image like this that has an ill-defined subject, I'm not sure what the system's going to do for it. So let's go ahead and take a look at, so if I wanted to select the icebergs because I wanted to increase the exposure, increase the whites, make them pop, you know, really make them sizzle. I want to select them and then make some selective edits just on the ice. So if I go to the mask tool in Lightroom and say create new mask and say select subject, it selects just that one iceberg. But I want both of them selected. So what I could do is I could add object, click on the ice, but because of the varied tonality of the ice, it doesn't do a great job. Let's go add object and paint across this and see what it's going to do. It got most of it, but you can see there's just a little bit up here that it didn't do. So that's not too bad. So then from here, I could, you know, increase the exposure if I wanted to. I've got to drop the highlights, increase the whites. And you can see, you know, it went from that to that. And it, it did a reasonable job. You know, the other thing that I could do here in Photoshop is create a new mask, take a brush, and just start painting on the ice. And this is kind of the quick and easy and sloppy way, what I say sloppy, but it's kind of quick and easy way to, to do it. And there may be some overlap and some, some uh, uh, not perfect edge control with this. Um, you know, and then I could go ahead and make some edits and that, that kind of way. So, you know, in Lightroom, it, it sort of works okay. Um, it's really kind of the select object tool. If we come up here and go objects, whether you start with the subject or not, but let's see if I just do select object unto itself, paint all of this. And we'll get this all painted in. Da, 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 and let's see what Lightroom's going to do. Did a pretty good job of that. Look at that. There's just a little bit left here that I might subtract the brush from. So there you go for Lightroom. Let's take the same image and go into Photoshop and see what we can do there. Okay, here we are in Photoshop. So if you are a Photoshop user, here's 
a couple of ways that I may attack the, the, the desire to select just the icebergs. So the first kind of selection tool, right? There, there's a few selection tools. There is, you know, marquee tools that you can, you can surround the images with, but it won't snap to it. There's a magnetic lasso tool that you can use to uh, draw a line all the way around this. Kind of tedious, um, kind of not very much fun. So that's one option. Um, many of you may know the magic wand tool where if you select this and then click on something, it should select the whole thing. But it does that selection based on tonal values. And so when I click on this iceberg, I get a little bit of the first iceberg, I get a little bit of the lower one, I get the ocean, and I get some of the sky. That's not going to work. So if you're in Photoshop, what do you do? Well, if you see on your toolbar here, there's a small little down triangle. And if I click and hold that, there's something called the Object Selection Tool. And if you select this, what the, uh, what the system is going to start to do is identify different objects in the image. And when you hover over the image, it's going to uh, apply an overlay that you can change. If you go up to, uh, if you go up to um, the wrench here, the gears, here's your overlay sort of behavior and your preferences for the object finder. Um, you can refresh this if you want, and it'll get thinking. But as you hover over, we have to wait for it now to stop thinking. Um, but as you hover over areas, it will highlight them. So there's the sky, there's the ocean, there's the sand, there's iceberg one, there's iceberg two. So this is a great way with automatic object selection to, for me in Photoshop to, to uh, isolate these icebergs to make some adjustments. So if I click on this first iceberg, what happens? The system is going to create a layer for me. I'll go to the brightness. Let's say I want to increase the brightness of that one just a little bit. And you can see from my layer mask here, just that one little iceberg in the foreground is being affected. So I'm still on the object selection tool. So if I select this next object and I'll go back up to brightness and I'll do a little bit of that and bam, real easy. I selected both of those objects in Photoshop and uh, can make adjustments to them. So this object selection tool that you have, is a fantastic tool for you to use if you're a Photoshop user. All right, I'll go through another example with you. And for this example, I picked a very, very challenging image. What, something that I would feel is challenging for the software to discern what to select. What's an object? What's the subject? And, you know, pick the right thing. So this is a forested slope in uh, over near Yahats on the Oregon coast. So let's first, within, in Adobe Lightroom, try select subject. Well, it got half of one tree. So that's not a very great start to this. So let's delete the mask. Let's try objects. Let's see if we can select the trees that we want to edit. My goal here, folks, is to, is to edit these first three trees that are right in the foreground. So I want to edit those. So I want to select them so I can isolate them from the rest of the image. So let's go ahead and try objects. And I'll try this first tree and I'll just paint right over the top of this and see what it does. Ooh, look at that. That's a pretty good selection. Okay, let's try the next tree. And again, we'll continue to select objects. And even though the brush doesn't cover the whole tree, ooh, look at that. You know what I was really worried about? You see how this tree overlaps this tree behind it? I was worried that the software would think that this was part of the foreground tree. So let's go ahead and do the third tree and see what I can do here. Uh, 
Look at that. I have got three beautifully selected trees in this image. So, you know, if I wanted to bump up the exposure of this one, I want to bump up the exposure of the front one and add a little contrast. And then this first one, I want to bump up the exposure just a little bit. Excellent. Well, let's go ahead and take this image into Photoshop and see what Photoshop will do in terms of object selection. All right, so here we are in Photoshop. And if you remember my object selection tool right up here, let's go ahead and click on that. And then I'll hover over part of the image. Let me first start over here on the right with this one tree. All right, it identified that as an object, which is great. The, this middle tree, ooh, not so good. This is what I was afraid of. It selected the tree in the background. So I could um, do this mask and then, and then with my brush, paint out the background tree if I wanted to. But this is really a, a test and a demonstration of what the software will do. And then this tree on the left, let's see what's gonna happen completely missed the mark. So because there's such an overlap with the tree to the left and then the tree behind it, the software doesn't know what to do. So the, basically the whole image is selected as an object. So Photoshop is clearly not the best tool to select these three trees to make edits on. All right, folks, I hope you enjoyed that quick little video around object selection in both Lightroom and Photoshop. As you saw from especially that last demonstration, no one tool is perfect. So in the first demonstration, in the first image, Lightroom didn't do as great as I needed it to. So Photoshop did a great job. In the second image of the trees, Lightroom did a really, really good job, a much better job than I expected it to. Photoshop failed, absolutely failed, which is really kind of funny because you think that the logic engines for both of these would be really similar, but obviously not. So this is a great technique for isolating particular subjects or objects in your image that you want to apply very specific edits to. So thanks for watching. Have a great day and stay tuned for more videos.